Hurricane Ernesto approaches Bermuda and a tropical wave enters the Caribbean. Your forecast across the Caribbean and the Bahamas starts right now. This is Meteo Mundo. Hi everyone, Rusty back at Media Mundo. Nice to see you on a Friday. Hope things are well with you. Coming up in this video, we'll talk about Hurricane Ernesto already beginning to bring impacts to Bermuda, but those impacts are going to get worse and worse late tonight and on Saturday. I'll have all the newest information. We do have a tropical wave entering the Caribbean right now. We'll talk about its impacts and the forecasts across our area for the weekend ahead. And then we'll look at the prospects for potential tropical development as we get into next week. As we get this video started, you know, I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know where you're viewing from, what the weather has been like, especially if you have been impacted by Ernesto. Some of you have sent me messages on our various social media platforms via email, catching me up, and it's good to see things are beginning to slowly progress. But if I haven't heard from you, let me know in the comments section below how you guys are faring. All right, let's get into what's going on currently with Ernesto. Again, we have ourselves a Category 2 hurricane winds are 100 miles an hour. Ernesto is beginning to look a little better organized on this Friday afternoon. Already, we've had some wind gusts in Bermuda of over 60 miles an hour. The tropical storm uh, conditions will get more and more consistent during the late Friday afternoon, evening hours, and then early overnight, we expect hurricane conditions to begin to impact the island. And this is an all hazards event for Bermuda. This is going to bring in some high impacts, unfortunately. So the 2 p.m. advisor from the Hurricane Center, Ernesto has winds of 100 miles an hour. Moving to the north, northeast at 14 miles an hour should slow up a little bit, but mainly keep that forward speed. And unfortunately, again, we're kind of beyond the talk of, is this gonna hit the island, is this not? Unfortunately, we do expect direct hurricane impacts for Bermuda. Beyond that, it should accelerate and could actually bring some very uh, blustery conditions and some gale conditions to the coast of Newfoundland, Newfoundland there in eastern Canada. So let's take a look at what Ernesto is bringing right now. You see these brighter reds. They're beginning to wrap back around the center of circulation. Uh, we're getting a little bit more convection around what we call the central dense overcast. It is a sign, again, that basically the inner core structure is looking relatively good. For a Category 2 hurricane, it's been a little bit on the sloppier side, to be quite honest for us here, especially, again, that the western side is still void of a lot of of very strong winds. Now, unfortunately, this track is expected to basically take it over the island, give it or take a couple of miles, but there's really not a lot of play in trying to pull this too far east. So again, we do expect the potential eye to move right over the island. And we've already had, again, wind gusts here, and that's the numbers that you see, blow over 60 miles an hour. The red slash line, of course, is the hurricane warning. So I'll just take that off. So it's a little bit easier that you can see, again, briefly, we had a squall, uh, squall come through of the northern feeder band there of Ernesto that already brought some 60 mile an hour winds. But again, visible satellite imagery, it looks better overall compared to yesterday. Let's take a look at the vis and infrared satellite imagery together. And again, you'll notice that the western edge is a little sharper. We don't have as much convection, but also it's a little healthier as well. So unfortunately, uh, while Ernesto might slowly weaken maybe get down to 95 or 90 mile an hour winds as it approaches the island. There's not going to look like a big tug to drop this down. This is the latest Hurricane Hunter reconnaissance aircraft that has flown through Ernesto. Again, we're looking for those purples on your legend for the strongest winds. We mentioned it yesterday that we really had them mainly on the eastern semicircle, but now there are more purples west and even a little bit farther south and west as well. Still more concentrated on the eastern side, uh, but friends, this is a storm that is going to bring uh, some big time problems to the island. So let's kind of talk about the timeline and the hazards for our friends in Bermuda. First of all, again, would expect more consistent tropical storm conditions just late as we go through Friday evening. And then the official forecast really is for the hurricane conditions to begin to set in in the wee hours of Saturday. And you can see that spiraling in. So this is gonna come with a significant storm surge. This is gonna come with potentially six to 12 inches of rain and maybe even up to 15 inches in a couple of spots. And obviously it's gonna come with a lot of wind as well. I'm gonna switch over to the GFS model here. I'm gonna bring that up for you. And then we're gonna take a look at 
exactly what's going to be happening here basically just over the next couple of days. And again, just going to keep this particular look up here. So we should be able to get the, the GFS to come up real quick. And again, relatively speaking, the GFS has just been too sloppy with the storm. It never really fully has Ernesto, but more than anything, I just want you to see again that by eight o'clock tonight, some of the heavier squalls will already begin to be moving in. Let's switch over to the NAM and take a look at that. It's a little bit more depictive of, I believe, the situation we're going to see. I'm going to back this up basically to right now, and then we'll go out until tomorrow evening. Now look, the majority of Saturday is going to be extremely rough for the island. Potentially by the end of Saturday, conditions will begin to slowly improve. But the NAM model, again, pulls the center basically on the western side of the island. So an actual landfall of Ernesto is a plausible scenario. But unfortunately, again, we stay on the eastern stronger side. So the storm surge, the winds, which will be gusting potentially over 100 miles an hour, and the 6 to 12 to even 15 inches of rain. This is the European model. And again, the center passes just west of the island. You can see the number here, 100, but I wrote it on the screen. The max wind gust early tomorrow morning, 100 miles an hour on the island. And of course, that's on the outer uh, eastern side of the eye wall, which unfortunately rakes the island here on this model. So our friends in Bermuda, again, please check in with your local officials, your local government. You want to make sure you're taking all of those preps and you really want them to be done by the time you're watching this video. I hope that you found your safe place. But again, prepare for hurricane conditions, uh, category two strength moving across the island. Now, the other big thing, of course, the storm surge is an issue, but the waves overall are going to be a big problem as well. We could be talking about some 12, 14, 16, 18 foot waves coming in with Ernesto. We'll let it run through here. But if you see, again, we're approaching those darker oranges near red. And, you know, these are wave heights that are extremely, extremely profound. So again, seven significant waves and directions. So could there be some 18, 20 foot swells? It's, it's plausible with a category two hurricane. Uh, and again, moving across the island. Now for the United States East Coast, this is also going to kick up big time swells along the eastern seaboard. It's also going to make uh, surf conditions extremely dangerous with some very dangerous rip currents that will just continue to ride up the eastern seaboard and even into New England. So that's another problem as well. I mentioned the rain. The GFS model is better with the rainfall total. So let me bring this back into play here. And again, uh, first of all, all the rings that you see, the purples are your hurricane force winds. And you notice that they are uh, certainly all over the island. Then when we look at the rainfall totals, let me bring this up here real quick. Here we go. So just, again, querying these numbers, we can see that we're in that, again, 6 to 12, locally higher. If it slows up a little bit more, we might be more at 10. Right now, the GFS is more on the 8 to 9, but there will be locally higher amounts than that. It's going to be problems for the island, all right? So our thoughts are with you guys, just to let you know for coverage, starting early on Saturday morning, uh, our 24 seven radar system will be running for our friends in uh, Bermuda. So if you have an opportunity, you can tune in and watch that. Again, this computer system will be running in real time so you guys can get the latest updates. I urge you again to check in with your local government, your local officials, and uh, our thoughts are with you guys. Just make sure that you guys are ready and prepared here uh, very early on this Friday before weather really goes downhill starting early on Saturday. Let's get back out to the rest of the story here, guys. Uh, first thing I want to talk about here is our tropical wave moving into the Lesser Antilles. We've had some decent showers and storms for today across the region. A little bullseye right now. It developed kind of over the St. Lucia area up towards Martinique, Dominica, Guadeloupe. You can see a decent amount of lightning to go along with this as well. Let's get that lightning back on here real quick. Pop back on for me. There we go. Few lightning strikes. As a matter of fact, at the hour, Guadalupe getting pretty hammered right now with a healthy thunderstorm. So this axis of tropical moisture, again, it's not going to develop into a disturbance. We don't have to worry about a tropical depression or a tropical storm. It's another axis to bring showers and storms. Now, again, it's such a double-edged sword because 
We've had Ernesto move through the Leeward Islands and the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, and there's big time problems there still. A lot of power problems still, a lot of utilities down, just infrastructures, you know, trying to get back. And now we have more rain and storms coming. But it's also been so darn hot behind the storm. When you don't have power, that is a problem. So this will provide some cooling relief to some areas. Now today, it's been relatively quiet with just a few showers trying to develop down towards Trinidad and Tobago. A couple of passing showers possible, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados. Many dry hours and locations though. This is really starting Martinique North, Dominica, Guadeloupe. Some of this will try and build towards Montserrat, Antigua, St. Kitts and Nevis, Barbuda, uh, as we head towards uh, Saba and St. Eustatius as well, just throughout the remainder of this late Friday. If you don't get some of the showers tonight, they will redevelop again on Saturday, and these areas will have good chances of rain Saturday in the same situation for the U.S. and British Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico as well. I mentioned the heat. Since we're here, let's just go ahead and bring that on. The first thing will be temperatures in Fahrenheit, which you know, don't look exceptionally hot, but it's also very clear to see where the rain is as those numbers have dropped back down into the lower 80s in the areas that I just mentioned. Then we put on the feels like temperatures. And again, if you haven't seen the rain, your feels like temperatures are above 100, which is, you know, uh, upper 30s in Celsius. We get to 110, we're at 43. 0.3 degrees Celsius, and it's been a very hot, sorry about that, that's a way to zoom in, my bad, a very hot day through the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. San Juan's feels like temperature around 105. Let's get on over to our friends in Hispaniola. A couple of showers and storms developing. They're still relatively isolated in nature, but they're beginning to crop up here on this Friday afternoon. Look at the heat. Samana hitting around 114. It's about 46 degrees Celsius. Not much better in Santo Domingo. Uh, same thing for La Mermana and Punta Cana. Puerto Plata as well. It's hot in Port-au-Prince, Lakai. This area will get a better chance for some showers and storms coming up on Saturday as well. My friends in Jamaica, it's feast or famine once again. Heat, 114 for a feels like temperature in Kingston. Showers and storms beginning to develop on the western side of the island here. Mainly, again, Hanover, Westmoreland parishes, places in St. James and St. Elizabeth will catch some of these as well. Montego Bay, Lucy, Falmouth, Cambridge, Saint Lamar, Negril, all with the better chance right now. If we see a redevelopment, we might try and push some storms back to the central in the eastern sides of the island. I do want to pause this real quickly because some of you here, and I've got a lot of friends in Jamaica, messaged me and said, by the way, Rusty, we had an earthquake this morning. So I want to point that out. There was an earthquake here in the eastern side of the island, and it was a fairly significant earthquake, 4.5 magnitude, 10 kilometers north-northeast of Stony Hill. If you felt this earthquake, let me know in the comments section below. I uh, haven't seen any reports of damage, but if you've heard of some damage or any issues with that earthquake, uh, let me know. But again, thanks for our friends uh, making me aware of that. So there was an earthquake that was at least felt across portions of the island earlier on this Friday. And again, storms moving into the western side. Otherwise, again, for the Western Caribbean, we're going to see a few more storms develop across Cuba. It's still dry for Cayman, a little Cayman, Cayman Brock, and uh, Grand Cayman. We haven't seen the storms develop in earnest yet across the Yucatan and portions of Central America. We mentioned how it's going to be drying out a little bit here. Nicaragua, down towards Panama, Costa Rica, all with a little bit better chance for showers and storms. Now, up in the Bahamas, we are getting some more rain for today, just like we did yesterday. Let's bring that up. Now, these storms compared to our Thursday have shifted a little bit farther off towards the south, and now they're more concentrated in places like Andros and New Providence. So bring on the radar. We'll drop that off and again, pull this up. And you can see the showers and storms across the area, scattered in nature, trying to get a little bit of heavier rain, trying to cool our friends down in Nassau. My friends in Nassau, Paradise Island, Old Fort Bay uh, have told me, hey, Rusty, it's been very, very hot here. And, you know, again, a cooling shower would be great. They're trying to drift into the area, but they are a little bit more concentrated west of Andros towards the Florida Keys. A couple of little strikes of lightning there towards Cat Island. But again, for the central and the southeast sides of the Bahamas and the Turks and the Caicos, Ernesto has pulled away a lot of the moisture for today. So not expecting there to be a lot of rain in those areas. 
As we get into the forecast part, friends, I appreciate you liking this video. Thank you for subscribing to Media Mundo. Thank you to all of our loyal subscribers. Thank you to all of our new subscribers. And again, thank you for finding ways to support us here as well via our memberships, the super thanks, and then and you can find some ways to uh, support the channel through the description below. All right, so now we're going to get into the weekend forecast, and then we're going to delve into what potential tropical development we might see starting next week. Again, this tropical wave is not going to be developing. So it's more about where are the areas of rain going to be and how much are we going to get. So we'll bring back the models here. I'm going to loop this back up. Give me just one second to reset that. And again, a lot of you have been like, Rusty, we need these cooling showers. We need a little bit more rain. Now, obviously, we don't want Ernesto, but this time of the year, when you catch two or three days of quieter weather, it gets pretty rough outside for us here. I want you to note that, again, we're going to have passing showers across the Caribbean, a little bit better chance for rain in the Bahamas for uh, the weekend, and then a little bit more concentrated rain back through portions of the Yucatan in Central America. But as far as really getting any extremely robust chances, I really don't expect it. Again, on the GFS, it's a little too weak with our tropical wave moving through. Scattered showers are possible here. Uh, especially tomorrow. Actually, the model is underdoing the rain that I expect for tomorrow, but I just wanted to point that out, and then I'm going to switch over to the NAM, where if you're looking for some rain in the eastern Caribbean, your best chance is going to come uh, tomorrow, and then we're going to dry back out again, and then that moisture is actually just going to carry in from e uh, east to west throughout the remainder of the weekend and into early next week. Make sure I'm hitting the right buttons here while I'm also trying to talk. The two things at once can get a little bit complicated, but here we go. So you'll start to see on the NAM this moisture axis move through. There'll be some gusty winds. There'll be a little bit of lightning just like we saw, but again, cooling downpours. It's not going to be enough in any one area where I'm really more concerned about the flooding. Of course, somewhere like Puerto Rico, which is still dealing with very high river levels and just high water levels in general. While a cooling shower is nice, we don't want to concentrate the rain over that area very long. And I do expect there to be some heavier downpours, but in a general sense, not enough to cause additional flooding issues. And again, to cool things down a bit is not a bad thing for us here as hot and as humid as it will be. You can notice that moisture just continues to move off towards the west. And those showers will just continue to get a little bit more concentrated into the Northwest Caribbean as we get into Sunday and into early part of next week. And we'll spiral in some more showers here for our friends in the Yucatan and Central America. As far as the rain goes for the Bahamas, still expecting a better chance for rain on the Northwest side. There's a little bit of instability that's gonna be left over with the sea breeze storms down in South Florida over the weekend. That should pulse up more rain for Walker's Key and Grand Bahama in Abaco and Bimini, maybe as far south as Andros, New Providence in Eleuthera. But again, there'll be some rain, Cat Island and Exuma and Rumkey and San Salvador towards the Acklands and even the Turks and the Caicos. Not a lot though, isolated to scattered at best. We'll get more rain for our friends in Santa Domingo and Punta Cana tomorrow, somewhat on Sunday, and then drying out a bit again. Uh, not a huge concentration of rain, but again, for the lesser Antilles overall, I would anticipate there being more rain overall tomorrow in a fast-moving fashion, and then overall we start to dry out a bit Sunday and into Monday. But this is not going to develop into a tropical system, so we don't have to worry about that. This is just going to try and bring a little bit of cooling rain to the area. So let's break it down for you island by island, Northwest Bahamas. Again, just kind of a gradual increase with that, you know, sea breeze collision and just a little bit more instability overall up here. I do expect there to be a few isolated showers and storms in central and southeast Bahamas, but nothing concentrated. Same thing for our friends in the Turks and Caicos. We'll get some storms to develop in the afternoon hours right over the heart of Cuba. Again, relatively localized, if anything else. Cayman Islands, 30% chance to borrow, but a little bit more moisture Sunday, Monday, and you guys have been dry, so hope you catch some of these showers. Belize City is also drier over the weekend, but we'll catch a better chance for rain on Monday. And Cancun and Cosmos should be a beautiful weekend there for the vacationers. Jamaica, 40% chance tomorrow and Sunday. 
not island-wide, feels like temperatures if you don't get the rain between 110 and 115 Fahrenheit. Again, 43 to around 45, 46 Celsius. Not fun at all. Dominican Republic's best rain chances and Puerto Rico is tomorrow. Then they'll fall off a bit on Sunday and Monday, but still some scattered showers and storms are expected. U.S. and British Virgin Islands will be in about the same fate, if you will. Bermuda, again, hurricane conditions on Saturday. A few showers could still linger behind Ernesto on Sunday, and then we're basically dry early next week. And Willis rain chances are relatively high for tomorrow. Again, that moisture lifting north uh, could bring some rain early on our Saturday and then a drier Sunday, Monday. St. Kitts and Nevis in the same boat as well. Antigua, Barbuda, 60% chance to borrow. So overall for the Lesser Antilles, we're going to see a higher rain chance on Saturday and then drier forecast for Sunday and Monday. Uh, rain chances overall are a little bit higher north because again, that moisture is lifting to the north, but a few additional showers will be in our southern area, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as an example, 40% chance. Same thing for Barbados and Grenada, and then again, lower chances Sunday, Monday. Trinidad and Tobago will be more isolated, but they can still see pockets of heavier rain. But again, overall, many dry hours and locations, scattered showers and storms for Suriname and Guyana. Best chance for Nueva Esparta and the ABC Islands is tomorrow. And again, if you don't catch the rain of the ABC Islands, we're still pushing 33, 34 degrees Celsius for daytime highs. So let's talk about, because friends, we're in the heart of hurricane season, right? We are deep into mid-August now. What does it look like for the week ahead? This is our surface map, and I want to highlight where the three tropical waves are in the Atlantic. One, of course, is crossing over the Lesser Antilles as we speak, and that's going to be moving into the Eastern Caribbean. Two more behind that one at, as well. So we have two more in the main development region uh, of the Atlantic. But that being said, we don't actually expect those in the short term to develop. This is the European ensemble of the entire Atlantic Basin. That, of course, is Ernesto moving away. So now we would look back down here in that Atlantic Basin main development region for additional development. And here's Ernesto, so this is the timeline starting right now. Notice that we really don't see anything. If we catch a signal for development, it's actually going to be in the Caribbean. We could go down a huge, nerdy meteorological rabbit hole as to why over the next seven days or so, we're not gonna get development here likely, okay? Uh, but let's just say overall for a brief time, conditions appear to not be conducive for these waves to develop before the Caribbean. If there is a chance, more than likely, it's actually going to be in the Caribbean. So not in the Atlantic, but in the Caribbean. Of course, this is Ernesto, and this is the European development areas over the next 10 days. Obviously, this is Ernesto moving away. Notice it does have two areas, one in the Greater Antilles and one in the Southwest Caribbean, potentially late next week. It also does try and get one of the waves going towards the end of that 10-day uh, time frame of the west coast of Africa. But we're not seeing those really high signals here and high chances in the main development region. So I just wanted to point that out. As these waves that I showed you move across the Lesser Antilles and into the Caribbean, they're more than likely still going to be open, bringing showers and storms. But as they get into the Caribbean, there might be a slightly higher chance at least next week to see some potential development here, okay? So that's what I'll be looking for. Now, in the longer term, beyond next week, things again get more interesting in the Atlantic as these waves look to be more robust. On the rainfall forecast from the European model, you can see some of the heavier rain for the Bahamas we talked about. You can see some of the heavier rain for Central America and portions especially down towards Costa Rica and Panama, but it is slightly drier overall for the lesser and the greater Antilles. So passing waves, but they're moving so fast. These waves have forward speeds of 15, 20 miles an hour. They're just not going to sit in some spots for any length of time. So, you know, we're looking more at an inch or two of rain in a lot of areas, 25 to 50 millimeters here. And again, that will all come along with whether something tries to get going here. But relatively speaking, for August next week, things look pretty good for us here. 
friends. You can find me across all social media, Instagram, TikTok, X, Facebook. You want to send me a picture or video, it's mymediamundo at gmail.com. Of course, you have a specific question about the forecast, happy to drop it in the comments section below. Again, remember, starting early tomorrow morning, we'll be bringing our live radar system in to cover Ernesto as it moves through Bermuda. So if you want to tune in for that, our friends there, or you have any interest, we'll be running that for you. Friends, have a great rest of your Friday. Our thoughts are with our friends in Bermuda, and I will see you soon, right here at Media Mundo. Thank you.